<laughs> hey, you know who's got something for us? It's the Rick Morris. <laughs> hey, boys. Happy to be on the yeah. show. Thanks for having um, me here. Well, it's we're happy that you're on the show. Uh, yeah, there's, it, we don't need much of a topical introduction for Rick Morris because he's got all the topics. <laughs> he, is, he is Rick Morris. He's my educational guru right here in the in the house with the Bedley Brothers. Hashtag edgy hero. And that's right. He's my edgy hero. He's now retired, but uh, his no, legacy he's lives on. I don't believe the hype. <laughs> yeah. So, I've, been, I've been keeping busy. What have you I been doing? Uh, or what? <laughs> yeah, I've been riding my bike, playing a little bit of golf, uh, hanging out with friends, uh, Rick Morris TV. We got over 30 videos posted now. And, um, wait, wait, wait. Let's stop for a second. Uh -huh. Tim, do a formal introduction. Uh -huh. No, yeah. no Everybody already knows who Rick Morris is. For our friends in, in Canada, they may not know Rick. Yeah, well, they need to know Rick. Okay, so Rick Morris is... Uh, well, hey. He's in, it is a <laughs> he's been he's been teaching teachers doing teacher trainings and running his own classroom and just doing amazing things with kids for what 40 years now or something 42 years in education yeah yeah 42 wow. years and uh he's at, he hails out of beautiful san diego california yes. just south of us and uh you know got out of the classroom because the demand for his services and training teachers was so high and was doing that for several years and now he's quote unquote retired, but uh, we're yes. gonna find out a little bit more about that. So Rick, uh, you've been, you've been uh, doing some TV shows. You've been, uh, you got a new channel on YouTube. Is that right? Right. It's just called Rick Morris TV. And if you go to my website and my website's easy to find, if you just Google Rick Morris, it comes up at the top of the list, but there's a direct link from my website, newmanagement.com straight to uh, the YouTube channel for Rick Morris TV. And we have two playlists so far. We're going to add a couple more playlists coming up in the new year. But some of the uh, videos come from my final talk at uh, San Joaquin County Office of Ed, and that was last March. So we filmed that. And then the other talks come just right out of my little video studio here at home. That's where I'm sitting right now, where I'm just talking. And the, the playlist is called Tools and Toys, just simple ways you can improve your classroom. Can you I'm give us an it. example of what, what listeners would hear on one of those, just to give them a little teaser? Uh, well, yeah, like uh, one of the first ones had to do with using a, a classroom alarm clock to alert kids who need to go to, say, the resource room to leave on time so that you don't have to remember how to, to have to do that. So if the kids need to be on the road at 1020 from your room and you have a very simple little chime that plays at 1020 every day, those three kids know it's time to get up and leave. And you don't get the phone call from the resource room at 1025 saying, hey, deadbeat, where are the kids? Send them up. <laughs> Which, I probably which, need that for doing attendance, Rick. I do. <laughs> I have it for attendance. It's right here on my phone. Yeah, alarm, alarm oh, clocks, God. they're just easy to do. They're automatic. And, and the, mm. the really cool thing, what I push more than anything else is, how do we get students to become more self-directed? And an alarm that plays at 1020 helps those three students become more self-directed. Otherwise, they're always having to rely upon the teacher to tell them when to go. And that's just not a good thing to do. It's really not good. I think your alarm just went on. My, well, it's my phone <laughs> timing in. I'm going to put it on do not disturb. I was going to do that and didn't. And now, okay, there we go. Well, yeah, that's a great idea because the kids, uh, it's, they're still self-directed. They have to pay attention to what, the, what does that alarm mean, and I have to get up on my own and leave the classroom. And then I think what that's going to do also is it's going to give the kids the idea, hey, I could do this on my own. Yes. I could do my own alarms that remind me when I need to do things, right? right. Yeah, it, like I say, it's just a transference of ownership as much as possible. Just the classrooms are so obedience-based, and kids just become dependent upon the teacher to tell them what to do or what not to do, and that's just not a good way to go. So my entire career has been devoted to how do we help kids become happy and productive? And for the most part, they need to be self-directed. And for that, they need freedom. If, if I was going to have the, your followers watch one video, it would be the Freedom List, which is episode two of the Final Talk playlist. The Freedom List is a phenomenal strategy that really boosts self-direction and also allows kids a bit of freedom in the classroom. Yeah, what I love, Rick, is your ideas are just so simple and practical. It's stuff that you've used in your classroom. It's not somebody that's some college prof somewhere that's mm -hmm. saying, this is what you guys should do in your elementary school classroom. And they've never <laughs> taught it, you know what I mean? We, we, we've heard that for years and years and years. Yeah, see, if it's not simple, you can't use it. There's enough complex stuff going on in the classroom without me adding to the complexity. No, simple is good. Simple is always good. 
So why don't you tell us about, you, you've got this idea that you're rolling out here for the Christmas season, the new year, and that's sure. uh, one of the main reasons that we wanted to have you on the show to share that with our listeners. So talk to us about that. Well, it's the video that will be posted today, as a matter of fact, it's from the Tools and Toys playlist. It's called the 2018 New Year Challenge. And what I'm challenging teachers to do is introduce some new idea, strategy, procedure, routine, concept, doesn't matter what, something new the kids haven't seen or done yet during that first week back in 2018. Because new is a very important piece of, of brain engagement. I, I work now with my best friend, brain guru, Len Torres. And he talks about what new does to the brain, but basically just new wakes up the brain um, and gains attention like you just cannot believe. And also bear in mind that uh, anything new is a novelty and novelty is a form of fun and fun is actually a student need. Glasser's identified five basic needs. One of them is fun. And I already mentioned one, freedom. So when we can start meeting student needs, uh, all kinds of good stuff happens. But but new is a great thing to do. It, it, it gets them to, to reassess the classroom. Oh, this is not going to be this flat, static we know this routine as the year progresses, we keep seeing new pieces and new components. Rick, I got to ask Keeps you because the teacher. Go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. I have to ask you this because I know there's a lot of people that are used to the compliance based classroom and <laughs> control, right? And, yes. and what, what, what do you say to somebody that that works for the, the kids are quiet. They're doing their worksheets or whatever they have given them to do. Um, there's a perception of success in that environment by administrators, of course, by teachers, by parents. Yes. Whereas it's, if you, you came into my classroom where there's freedom, I don't even have to be there and the kids are going to be learning uh, because I've set up structures in place for them to actually manage themselves. They're going on Google Calendar, setting their own timeframes for you know when things are there. It, like uh, so much going on, but to somebody that doesn't recognize that, that could look uh, chaotic at times. Well, yes, that, that, uh, that's a bit of a disconnect when the administrator isn't really sure what's going on. And when they step in and they see a quiet, calm classroom, it, they equate that with good. Uh, doesn't mean there's learning occurring or that there's engagement or the kids are motivated or they're self-directed. It just looks good. And it's just, it's all appearance. It's, there's no substance that we're evaluating because it's hard to evaluate substance. You'd have to spend an hour in the classroom see what's really going on. So yeah, we sometimes run into that. Uh, when teachers clamp down and they just expect kids to conform more than anything else, it, it all stagnates. And, and the year gets worse. It doesn't get better. The year should be getting better as you go through the year. But in obedience-based classrooms, it's a year-long battle to get them to do something or to get them to stop doing something. And that's what wears out teachers. And then and in those kinds of... Uh, classroom cultures, what happens is the relationship suffers dramatically. See, that's why your kids do well, Scott. You have a good relationship with them. They know that you trust them, you care about them, you take care of their needs, and they reciprocate in, in kind. Uh, Obedience-based classrooms are all microwave. We're kind of a microwave society, you know? Teams lose and fire the coach. Dogs bark and kick them. Uh, the independent self-directed classroom, that's more of a crockpot kind of a thing. Huh. Um, but what you get in the long run is always much better, always much better. And you, you kind of put, really put your finger on it when you said, I can walk out of my room and it still functions. In an obedience-based classroom, teacher steps out of the room or is distracted by a phone call, it all falls apart. Huh. It all falls apart. Of course, the administrator wouldn't see that because the teacher wouldn't leave the room to step outside for a moment or wouldn't allow a phone call to interrupt what was going on. But yeah, step out of the classroom and it falls apart, that tells you what what the true character of that classroom. You see, I could stay out front of my classroom when the bell rang, my guys were all doing their bell work thing and it was all, students started the song, someone started the timer, I was outside talking to a parent, um, they were fine inside. And when I was done with the parent, I came inside, they're wrapping it up and we're correcting it, we're moving on. Self-directed students, boy, that's that's the key right there. So I'm assuming that there's some teachers that are listening right now that are, you know, kind of buying what you're saying. That mm -hmm. maybe realize are realizing they're feeling a little edu conviction right now. You know that they're like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, let's have a confessional right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, but we, I, we, I, 
I, I do, I've been doing things that are more control based. So where would you start people in uh, that you running more of a freedom based classroom? I'm going to, I'm going to send them back to the second episode of the final talk on the Rick Morris TV channel. Okay. Because I flat out show you a strategy that really promotes self-direction by giving kids a bit of freedom to operate. And the kids who are doing it the right way keep the freedom. The kids who don't do this thing the right way, and I usually start off with, hey, guys, you may work wherever you wish in the classroom. We're not using the group table. Feel free. You want to lean against the wall, read a book. Lean against the wall, read a book. All that we ask is you're productive. And the kids who are productive, they get that freedom. Uh, if, you, if you take advantage of that freedom and you goof off with your buddy at the big table, I just draw a line through your name on this little list. That's why it's called the freedom list. It's just a list of names on a small roster. And I send you back to your seat. And, you know, that wasn't being productive. Back to your seat, please. And I draw a line through your name. Now, the cool thing about that is um, only the kids who are violating the policy are restricted. The kids doing it the right way keep their freedom. And then on Monday, we post a brand new list. And it's it took some of my kids six weeks to figure out, oh, if I want to move, which I like doing, <laughs> then I've got to be productive. Oh, because Mr. Morris isn't going to change his mind about being productive. I probably would have been that kid too. By the way. That, that's okay. I'd have, I'd have bounced you back to your seat seven times. I don't care, Scotty. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, Scott. No, Scott. Back to your seat. Uh, I'm having flashbacks to elementary school right Rich, now. <laughs> I draw a line through your name. But all, it's all done gently, firmly, yeah. barely. I'm picturing parents in the room as I talk to any student who's being restricted, you know. Imagine mom and dad was right there. What would I be saying? Those kinds of things keep me calm and focused. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd have people watch just that one episode. Uh, that's It's an easy strategy, and it's highly effective. It, it, Rick, how do you communicate this to parents so they understand what you're trying to develop in your classroom? Because a lot of parents come from this background of a compliance restrictive-based right program right. and and so they may see you as oh, oh he, he doesn't have any rules or he doesn't care right. or whatever because he's letting right. the kids look well, at they're know, walking over and getting a drink and they didn't have to raise their hand and ask for permission <laughs> like that's, that that's right yeah i mean getting a drink is a fundamental need i mean come on right. we're gonna try and control even that well then it gets just stupid when the kid wants to get a drink you know all the time and he does his little gesture for getting a drink a little w for water and the teacher shakes her head and he's going oh, i just want to get a drink you know, and two minutes later, he's back with the same little gesture, <laughs> shake his head, and the kids going, ah, water. <laughs> and then it gets stupid. It just gets stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you grant your permission, and the kids thinking, this is it. This is my one shot, my one shot at getting up out of my seat. So what do I do? I maximize the journey. And on the way to the drinking fountain, I mess with stuff I'm not supposed to mess with. Right. Talk to another student. Tease you, taunt you. No, he's gonna drink. He's gonna drink. Come on, he's gonna drink. Yeah, and then you go back to your seat. The same thing. Slap, slap, taunt, poke. <laughs> well, as yeah, I said, it's simpler. What you're describing, though, is there's still parameters. There's still compliance. There's still <laughs> expectations. So this is not Lord of the Flies. You know, it's not like no, no, no everybody it, no, it's what you feel like do it, and you'll learn through all of your experiences, right? Well, here, here's the phrase that I've used for years. It's freedom within framework. That's really what you want. Here's the framework. You have freedom within that. Violate the policy, lose the freedom temporarily. And then we would just keep adding lists as the year went on. The get a drink thing, the use the restroom when you want to kind of a thing. It's, but that's, that's just one of, of many strategies designed to get kids self-directed. But, but the whole parent thing, what won the parents over was the kid's attitude about being in my classroom. But I will tell you a funny story. Uh, I had an aide, one of the best aides I've ever worked with, former bank examiner, so organized, so meticulous. And they asked her to work in my room. And she told the principal, no. I walk by that room and like they're just goofing off in there. I don't know if I can work in that kind of environment. And she goes, come on, we need you to fill in. And she said, I wasn't in there a week. And I went, oh, this guy has got this thing dialed in. They're having a great time, but they're all working really hard. Outside looking in, though. She was leery about joining me. And, and we're still, we still go to breakfast once a month. She's like 82 now. <laughs> a wonderful lady. But she, yeah, she said, oh, I wasn't sure at first. And then she lived it for a week and realized, oh, no. No, I like this place. This is good. Yeah, it's not a snapshot. Yeah, it's not a snapshot. You gotta, yeah. You got to your picture. Your picture. Yeah, you got to experience it. Yes, absolutely. I'm getting yeah, a major echo me. right now. Yeah. Yeah. We, don't, we don't hear the echo, but. Okay. You know, it's annoying I, I hear it. I hear it. You're hearing it? Yeah, because yeah, we I'm might it. it might be on the recording. That's what I'm worried about. Sure. Uh, that's, um, that's right. You can 
Jim, edit there. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of editing. So, yes. Rick, before we move on, I just like uh, our listeners who maybe aren't quite as familiar with you, the people that are, uh, you know, are ignorant of all the amazing things that you do. Uh, can you just give us a real quick rundown? I'm going to get you started. If you use the numbers in your classroom, you got a, a paper that's got a bunch of numbers all over it that each kid is numbered, and you're right. crossing off the numbers on the on the sheet. You got right. that from Rick Morris originally. So you got the lock block that you put on doors. That's right. Uh, We've got that. We got door block out. We also um, classroom gestures. I'm a big fan of classroom gestures as a way to communicate. The fact that I could tell in the middle of a lesson when four hands were up. I could see that two students want to make a comment and two, there you go. And two students want to ask a question. And that enabled me to prioritize who I called upon, which made the lessons more effective. So you'll find two videos about classroom gestures in the tools and toys playlist. Man, this is, this, my, you're I'm giving, the, you're giving away everything that's been in your books, everything like that. Yes. All yes. Of this stuff, and then you're continuously coming out with new shows to share about these ideas to yes. pass this on to a generation. Yes. Uh, there's a, a lot of new teachers coming to the, the field right now. So, Rick, I, I I am so thankful that you're doing this. I can't even tell oh, you man. how much how thankful I am. Man. Well, um, let me just say this. Uh, I think God blessed me with the ability to solve problems, gift uh, to the classroom as opposed to the business world. So anything I do is just a uh, testimony to what he's done in, in my life. And I'm happy to share ideas. Even though I'm not on the road anymore, I'm doing seminars for 31 years, I'm happy not to be on the road anymore. But I think the ideas are valid enough they should continue to be shared. And it's truly wonderful to work with my son, who's uh, my producer. Yeah, that's I'm the fine. executive producer. He's the producer, and I, I'm the one that says, we need content. It's your job to get it done. So I provide the content, and he bangs them out. And he's really good at it. Scott, really, really and, I, good. Scott and I know a little bit about something like that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Working with our relatives. <laughs> that's it's horrible. Right? How do you do it? Jeez. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, on that note, let's switch gears then, uh, and we'll play sure. a little game with you here. No, what? Look, we can't. We can. No, well, we need uh, more I'll info. Be back again. No, we got to. We got to. We got to put Rick on again. Yeah. We, so we res- way, way too short. Time. Yep. We're gonna respect people's time. <laughs> so okay. we're gonna we're gonna call our little game. They're on the treadmill though right now, Rick. They're on the treadmill. They want they want another ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. The longer we go, the better shape our listeners get in. <laughs> yes, we're all about the New Year's resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you got to listen to grumpy old teachers. You get a really good workout oh, if yeah, you listen to that because that's a that's a long show. Okay. Um, so Rick, we're gonna call our little game that we're gonna play with you today. More Rick Morris. <laughs> nice. And Great. Scott, why don't you tell our audience who Rick Morris will be competing for today? Rick, you're going to be competing for Brigitte Hollahan, a grade three. I always say this right. It's because it's uh-huh. Canadian. A grade three teacher in Ontario, Canada. Okay. If you're able to answer two out of the three questions correctly, Brigitte will be awarded a free download of a ridiculously popular Wait, Edgy Rock Band, but wait, there's something else she gets to download too, right, Rick? Well, yes, uh, we get to download some uh, apps I've developed. One's called Class Cars and one's called Class Cues. And I'll be in touch with her through email, if that's what you said, and I'm going to take care of her. My last assignment was third grade. I love third grade. I've got so much great third grade material I'm going to pass on to her. Oh, it's going to be good. Mind blown good. right now, Brigitte. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully you can get two out of these three questions correct. Otherwise, she ain't getting nothing. <laughs> and no pressure here. Yeah, no pressure. Okay. So here we go with our first question, Rick. Uh, we're going to talk to you actually about some other Rick Morrises. Believe it or not, you're not the only one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So have you, have you ever Googled yourself and seen who else is out there besides? Yeah, a couple times, yes. The best Rick Morris. Okay. You're well, the one if, if you pay close attention, <laughs> you pay close attention, then you'll do really well on our quiz here. So number one, question number one, what one Rick Morris is a politician and an author. Which of the following is the title of a book authored by Rick Morris? Is it A? How to Eat Your Way Into Political Office. Or is it B? (laughs) Treadmill Training for Runners. Or is it C? Old Management Handbook. (laughs) Create a sadder, less productive classroom. How do you eat your way into office? Political office is the one possible title for his book, or treadmill training for runners, or 
old management handbook creating a sadder, less productive classroom. I'm going to go treadmill training for runners. Well, guess what? That, is, that is correct. Oh, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. You did it. You did it. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't pick C, but anyway, here we go. <laughs> Another Rick Morris is famous for something a little out of the ordinary. Which of these is the reason another Rick Morris is well known? Is it A? I'm going to go with Fisherman. <laughs> Did you Google that? No. I, I said, I, 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 I've seen guys. There's, there's, there's one guy who's a fisherman and one guy who's actually a car driver. Okay. Well, let us do the question first for crying oh, out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> the quiz. It's. it's <laughs> This is this everybody. This is why you need to go watch Rick TV because he knows exactly what you need. <laughs> He'll give it to you. Okay. He's so the expert. Expert. is it A? He's an expert on city sewer systems. Is it B? He's a professional angler fisherman. It could be. <laughs> or is it C? He's the inventor of the door unlock blocks. <laughs> I'm gonna go with B. The angler. <laughs> okay. Well, believe it or not, you got that one right. Okay. Woo. Let's go to the third and final question. Finally, Rick, a third Rick Morris is a tenured PE teacher at Berkeley, the college. What type of physical training does Rick Morris specialize in? Is it a racket sports? Hang on one second. Tim has left the building. This is All right, what's, what's, what's B? We'll just keep going. Is it B? He'll be so mad. <laughs> no, he won't. No, he's back. <sighs> okay, I was afraid we get background noise in there. I don't know if you guys heard the talking before, but... No. No. No, okay, that's good. All right. Do we have uh, any racket sports? Well, I'm going to start with that again. Ready? All right, sure. Is it A? Racket sports. Is it B? Track and field. Or is it C? Interpretive dance of TV show theme songs. <laughs> well, hasn't it been B and B? This is Berkeley. This is Berkeley. <laughs> yes, it, it is. Um, I'm torn between A and B, but since the first two matches have been B, I think, I'm going to go with B again. Well, actually, it's racket sports that he is uh, I was going to go with that first. In. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Uh, yeah, it's not interpretive dance or TV. We know that you really like enjoy TV uh, show theme songs. I do. <laughs> That's me. And uh, for the, our listeners that don't know, Rick recommends that we play uh, TV show theme songs and transition to get the kids to follow certain things without any verbal clues. So uh, you got to check that idea out too. It's, he's just got so many amazing ideas. And Rick, why don't you let our audience know, oh, we got to hear from Scott first. How did Rick do on uh, the, the quiz? <laughs> Hang on, our, our wonderful custodian just came in. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of distractions today. All right. Tim, so let me give that to you again, Scott. Here we go. It's going to be a brutal <laughs> So, Scott. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All the coughing, too. So, Scott, how did Rick do on today's little game that we were playing with him? Good job, Rick. You got two out of three correct, and that's good enough awesome. to be a winner. Awesome. Woo. Congratulations, Almost buddy. Three. You've yeah, you've won absolutely nothing. But Brigitte in Canada wins big. She just won a big. free download of your apps. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Rick, for providing something oh, so cool for our, our listeners. We're gonna and take care of her. I am so I, I'm so thankful for you, man. I can't you know you know how much I I think about you as, as yeah, I know. You guys, you guys have been great. I've enjoyed our friendship for years and years and years. I really yeah. have. We appreciate you. Guys are you. So uh, why don't you tell our listeners, Rick, uh, how they can follow up and learn more. You already mentioned your website. Right. Uh, give, give it to the listeners again. Uh, I don't know if you're active on Twitter or if, if you're willing to give out email addresses or anything. And you Yeah, Twitter Twitter's just at Rick Management, R-I-C-K-M-G-M-T. Instagram, it's uh, Rick Morris TV. And that's really what I've been pushing lately, Rick Morris TV. But if you go to my website, which is newmanagement.com, or again, just Google Rick Morris and just skip the angler and the uh, you know, the racket sport coach, you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll find it. But yeah, I'd recommend people just take a look at the videos and see what they think. I, 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 ideas you can use right away in the classroom. And then they're not, they're not big. They're, they're easy to do, but they have a huge impact. 
Totally. And before we go, I've, I've got a, a joke that's actually classroom appropriate. Oh, good. Okay. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah. What did one snowman say to the other snowman? Um, Do you smell carrots? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go, teachers. Use I'm that one with your uh, third graders tomorrow. <laughs> All right, Scott, tell our listeners, remind them, uh, we've got a big global event coming up in February, yes. and uh, we're super excited about that. Scott, remind our listeners about it. Tim, it's Global School Play Day. You can go to globalschoolplayday.com to learn more information about the whole purpose behind the event. But basically, it boils down to this, is kids need unstructured playtime to learn how to manage themselves, to develop mm -hmm. empathy, to like be the people that we really want them to become. And we're saying as a school system, we're saying as classroom teachers, that we're going to advocate for kids to have that free time and we're going to be a model by giving up a day of instruction. Oh, heaven forbid. Uh, we're going to give up a day <laughs> of instruction and let our kids play to say, let's kick it all off. Let's have it keep going at home and, and really to see the value in that play time, Tim. That's right. And, you know, I've heard, uh, I've talked to some naysayers, of course, uh, you always have those who are like, well, why are you using a class uh, day for that? Why are you using school time for that? They can go home and play. But that's the problem is that they mm -hmm. don't go home and play. Mm -hmm. So by blocking out a period of time and saying, this is so important that we're actually going to give up worksheets for a day and we're just going to let you play, <laughs> then yes. we're sending a message to the kids. It's like, uh, and, and the kids that don't do it play at school. And I've had so many of them over the last few years that are like, that was so fun. It's like, Best really? Best day ever. Best day ever. Like, you don't ever do that? With, no, they don't. They don't go home and play. And, so. and again, we're talking student needs. There's a need, as I mentioned, for fun and freedom. There's a need for power. And when you're playing a game, you get to exercise a bit of power, especially if it's team on team. And also there's a need for love. Oh, totally. Yeah. All that those skills that we learned in, in when no adult is standing over us telling exactly yeah, what to do. Correct. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. And Tim, Tim yeah. we went from uh, 60 plus thousand the first year. Second year was about 150,000. Last year we were uh, about 300,000. And already we're uh, close to 100,000. Wow. We still got a, over um, almost about two months left to go before the actual event itself. But nice. uh, we're, we, we need to see 500,000 kids playing. And last year there was 51 nations involved with letting their kids participate in this event. And, and we need you to be participating in this event, teachers and administrators and listeners. And sh we really need you, right, Tim, to be sharing this out with your network and circle yeah, people. Yeah, please put it on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, talk about it at your next staff meeting. And, you know, if you signed up, great, but we got to get a bunch of other classes signed up. Yeah, this is absolutely. not about us and it's not about money. It's all about kids. Nobody's making yeah. any money off of this thing and nobody's That's getting free. Like, it's just yeah. all free. It's a global uh, grassroots movement to bring play back into the lives of our kids. Because we as adults can't go knock on doors and tell kids to come out and play. That's creepy. You, you, you can <laughs> be arrested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> in a world where it's all mobile devices, Yes, video games to get kids out playing together in groups. I think is, it's. Uh, how long does that go back in our culture? Yeah, they love it. Well, they, 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 it's they it's love almost it. gone yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, Rick. Appreciate you being on the show, oh. and can't wait to have you back on again real soon. And uh, thanks for watching everybody out there in uh, podcast land. But most of all, oh wait, Tim. Oh what? If they have a chance to actually give us a recommendation, thumbs up, a like, or anything like that, we would really appreciate it. Always good. <laughs> and Hit that good subscribe button if you're listening to us for the first time, for sure. Yes, please. All right. So what's our sign off? There you go, Scott. Thanks for watching. Hey, and, and uh, Merry <laughs> Christmas, Mom and Dad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mom and yes. Dad. Merry we Christmas. love you, Mom and Dad.